The Bangs Up Bulls, who are missing Zach Levine, Alex Caruso, Derek Jones Jr., Javante Green, and now Lonzo Ball yet again, have seen the Miami Heat cut their lead down in the Eastern Conference. After beating the Pistons by 46, one of their recent L's was on the second night of a back-to-back -to, -back to the fully healthy Brooklyn Nets, who Chicago still holds the season series advantage against. While versus Golden State, they were missing Draymond, Chicago was missing the man who takes all the pressure off to Rosen and their 1A scoring threat in Zach Levine in their blowout loss to the Warriors. Still without Levine, they came up a few possessions short of beating the Celtics, and then without three top shot creators in Lonzo, Levine, and Caruso, took a 13-point L to the red-hot Memphis Grizzlies. With Caruso and Javante entering a rehab assignment in the G League, it seems the Bulls will get the GOAT and a top defender back shortly. Zach suffered no structural damage and could return soon as well. Meanwhile, Zoe is day-to-day -day with a knee setback. Despite the flurry of injuries, there's still some solid depth on the wing and two all-stars in Debo and Vooch. So here's how the Chicago Bulls will overcome their slump in ways other than merely getting their guys healthy, and stay tuned to see the main reason why things could turn back in Chi-Town's favor. Before continuing, only 11.5% of you watching are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. After winning 10 of 11 games from December 26th to January 11th, as of this recording, Chicago's dropped 4 straight and 5 of their last 6 outings. As I mentioned yesterday about the currently scuffling Warriors, all 30 ball clubs in the association deal with a slump stage at some point amidst the 82-game grind. The silver lining in this recent pitfall for Hoops fans in Chi-Town is the fact that two of their best players in DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine have gotten some luck from the basketball gods avoiding major injuries. For Levine, he was forced to have an MRI on his left knee after awkwardly coming down on it where it was revealed there wasn't any structural damage. For DeMar, a wet spot on the Grizzlies court took his legs out from underneath him, and he was lucky to have come out of this freak accident on your screen relatively unharmed aside from being shocked by the slippage. Still, not having Lonzo Ball and Zach Levine entails that Chicago is forced to make up for 40 points and 9.3 assists, which has expectedly been a struggle. Levine's going to be reevaluated next week, and Lonzo is expected to miss a few games. Best wishes to those two on a speedy recovery. Even for Bulls players who aren't injured, though, you can't forget, these guys are all new teammates playing their first seasons together, meaning this is the very first time as a unit in which they've collectively had to fight through adversity. I'd compare Chi-Town's current situation to when my hometown team in the Toronto Raptors ultimately took home the chip back in 2018-19, after winning six straight games in early November, my Raps dropped three in a row to New Orleans, Detroit, and then a conference rival, the Boston Celtics, in overtime. After that, they got back to business, rattling off eight consecutive Ws, but more notably, given Toronto overcame that adversity early in the year, that helped them build up a knowingness within the team structure that they could always bounce back. While the Bulls' current losing streak has gone further than the 18-19 Raps, and it's also occurred closer to the playoffs, it's unfair to discount the fact that Chicago's had much worse luck than that Raptors team. They're missing four crucial rotation pieces, and after three plus months of winning, it's been an adjustment for Chicago's system, having to suddenly fight off such turbulence. And times are getting a tad tense for Bulls Nation, with Butler and Adebayo now healthy for the scary Miami Heat, and the deep group down in South Beach only one game back in the loss column, and exactly zero games back overall. Don't forget, Chicago's down 2-0 in the season series to Miami, with two more games to go. For that reason, people have been saying they should trade a double-double machine in Vucevic just because he's been playing poorly. We'll get to that later on. But from my perspective, trading Vooch seems like a panic mode solution. Despite suffering some rough L's, we're now going to look at the main reasons for why the well-coached Bulls with the Florida Gators legend and two-time NCAA champ Billy Donovan can get through this rough patch. While the lack of year-to-year -year roster continuity has hurt Chicago's ability to fight through this adversity, taking consecutive L's in fairly ugly fashion should give the still number one seeded Bulls some damn pride. But don't tell the former Fighting Illini's 2021 consensus first-team All-American in Ayo Dosumu that Chicago's struggling to win games. Kid's been absolutely on fire as of late, and continues to be an incredibly versatile and all-around effective rotation piece on both sides of the court. 
wise and polished beyond his years. In 28 minutes per game so far in January, Io's averaging an extremely solid 9 points, 3 assists, and a steal per game, shooting 56% from the field and making an elite 53% of his shots from beyond the arc. Further displaying he's nothing less than a diamond in the rough, Dosumu doesn't quite have the minutes to qualify, but his 112.9 defensive rating would rank him number 15 among all small forwards in that area. Considering the Bulls rank number 19 in team defensive rating, that makes Io's 15th best individual ranking more impressive. Watching the 21-year-old's clamp up is a sight to behold with his physicality and attention to detail in terms of how he's constantly glued to his man. Against the player selected 37 picks ahead of him in his draft class, sit back and admire how Io locked down Cade in Chi-Town's 46-point win over Detroit recently. These defensive instances on your screen prove that Dosumu was a complete draft robbery by Mark Eversley in the Bulls' front office. The recent loss to Memphis was the 38th overall pick's 10th game already of scoring in double figures. Combine that with his lockdown defense, and other organizations are definitely wondering why they didn't select Ayo Dosumu. Don't forget about the improved scoring guard Kobe White, whose upgraded production in 2021-22 has been an overlooked storyline. Kobe's been incredibly efficient this season, with shooting splits of 46, 40, and 79, and like Dosumu, impressively amidst the Bulls' recent slide, White has kept his numbers up. In the month of January, the lottery pick from three years ago was giving Chi-Town 17 points per game. The North Carolina alumni continues to improve his facilitating, but his flashy, individual bucket-getting prowess has stood the test on the biggest stage in the NBA, on a team at the top of the conference. On the other hand, one of the MVP frontrunners in DeMar DeRozan has seen his efficiency somewhat fall off from the field and completely fall off from deep range this month without the shock creating relief of Levine to take defensive pressure off him. Even when Lonzo's periodically available as of late, Zoe hasn't found his rhythm, so that hasn't relieved DeMar too much either. Having said that, it's on Debo to lock in and deliver the beastly playmaking performances we all know he's capable of, with or without, two all-star caliber creators next to him. Problem is, based off the injuries, the now heavily relied upon number two guy in Nikola Vucevic has also struggled to adjust to the added responsibility. Vuce shot two of 13 from the field in the Bulls' 13-point loss to Memphis. You need way more than that from your stretch big. DeRozan's knocked down two game-winning three-pointers, and that shot from deep range has been an improved weapon in DeMar's bag throughout this year. However, in January, the man's attempted just .7 triples on average and is making a measly 17% of them. Debo and Vooch need to work together and find a way to be much more effective, considering these are two veteran leaders on the squad who in their careers have a combined six all-star appearances. DeMar's shiftiness off the dribble and Nikola's floor spacing and scoring prowess should be playing styles that create space and benefit off one another. Expect coach Billy Donovan to make it a point of emphasis for those two guys to take on a bigger leadership role and really lead the charge offensively. Not only is Chi-Town without Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball, but three elite defensive players in Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr., and Alex Caruso are missing as well. Those injuries have also come at the absolute worst time in the schedule, but here's a massive bright side if you're a Bulls fan. After facing the Cavaliers and Bucks, other than my Toronto Raptors, whose record is 22-21, and 21, the Bulls' next six straight games, other than two against Toronto coming up, are against bottom-feeding teams well below 500. As your top guys get healthy, games against the Magic twice, along with the OKC Thunder, Trailblazers, Spurs, and Pacers, should help Chi-Town find their flow again, if they respect their opponents, of course. Not only is the upcoming easy schedule a main reason for why things could turn around for Chicago, but there's still some solid depth, with a nice two-way player in Troy Brown Jr. having dropped 14 in his last outing, the deep-range undrafted sniper Mr. 99% Matt Thomas dropped the season-best 13 points, including three triples. Also, Tony Bradley's a bulky rebounding five-man, who's not a bad backup to Vooch. Alfonso McKinney can give you some defense, and don't forget about the 44th overall pick from 2020 in Marco Simonovic. I asked the same thing about the Warriors yesterday, but should the Bulls be concerned in your opinion? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. 
Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebo Daga, who says the dubs shouldn't be concerned at all. Steph's shooting slump shouldn't press on too much longer. I think he was just ready to break Ray Allen's all-time three-point record. Pause to read the rest of Ona's take. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.